People can change the world if they care enough and they work hard enough. I had strong women in my background that really influenced how I saw life. You know, that's what Janet was all about, being a strong woman and, you know, wanting others to be a strong woman. I like being active, I like doing stuff, love adventures. I was always an outdoor girl. Uh, coming home from school, the best thing to do is get in your boots and your scrub clothes and go flying down to the creek. And we'd build dams and build boats. Janet is a real advocate for the outdoors. She is energetic, passionate, and a fighter. Janet Nice's love for the outdoors was fostered from a very young age, but it wasn't until her husband Jim took her grouse hunting on their honeymoon that Janet's passion for firearm activism really took off. She was my girl. I, out of all anybody else you see, Janet was always just my girl. We were high school sweethearts. I was the number one bass in the choir, and I had the front seat, and I looked up in the alto section, and there was this blonde girl sitting there with red sweater on, and I had to get to know that girl a little bit better. You remember the red sweater? I oh, do dear. remember the red sweater. Yeah, we're soulmates. Been married 50, well, 51 years. Yep, we've had hardships. Yeah, plenty. But we don't go to bed without kissing goodnight. On our um, honeymoon, <laughs> we went up to the mountains. We went grouse hunting. He said, let's put your boots on. We're going to go for a hike. We're going to take the guns for a hike. So that was my beginning of bird hunting. A after our children were um, uh, grown, we started taking big game hunts together. So then we started having conversations about why people hunt and what benefit it, it is. Hunting is a renewable resource, or even better, we've improved uh, numbers of animals because of our conservation. And we've been coming out here for forever. Right. It's just something so peaceful about the outdoors. Hiking, fishing, hunting. Oh gosh, it's, it's been a sanctuary. Janet's involvement with firearms and love for the outdoors have led to a long-standing tradition of advocacy for hunting and the shooting sports, a tradition she's carried over even through retirement. You might even say she's gaining momentum when others would have begun to slow down. Well, I promised my husband when we moved out here that I would retire. No more events, no more camps, no more hours on the phone soliciting people. And I was good for about a year. You can't help it. I want to leave a footprint behind. Safari Club International was probably one of the keystones in my life for education. I started out as an officer when Jim was an officer in our local chapter. And then I said, yeah, I'll come on the board. And it snowballed. I met Janet in the mid-1990s. She had a vision for what the organization can do far beyond what was in the textbooks. She's having a very huge impact, and I'm certainly glad to call her my friend and, and uh, person that I can reach out to whenever I need support here, especially with the legislature. They invited chapters to come to Washington, D.C. and be prepared by their professional lobbyists to go in on, on the floor with, with the Congress and talk to different representatives so I became part of a, a small group of volunteers that kept going back. My congressman was John Fox, and John Fox was part of a bill called Campfire, and they used the word illegal hunting in this bill that would have stopped hunting in Africa. I know the benefits that hunting in Africa does for the local villages and the economy there. We went in and sat down, my congressman comes in and I said, I am only asking you to change the language. Take the word hunters out and put the word poachers in. And he said, we are not changing the language. And I said, well, I'm really sorry to hear that, John. You're coming up for election. I am going to do everything in my power to remove you from your office. 
We set out the word to all the sportsmen's group within his voting district. He lost by over 8,000 votes. And that was the power of the sportsmen. But they had to be awakened. So that's what it takes sometimes. It's not just making the first statement, it's the follow-up and the follow-up and the follow-up that gets the job done. And a lot of people don't want to put the time or the energy into that, but today with politics the way they are, it's imperative. A lot of lives have been touched because of her engagement, because of her leadership. My grandson Jensen said, Mima, do you know everybody? So they were here for a weekend and we went to a fair. And I said to him when we got out of the car, don't worry, Jensen, not many people know me here. We weren't there five minutes. And this man approached me with a big smile on his face. And he goes, I know who you are. And of course, my grandson is already rolling his eyes. He goes, yeah, you're that NRA lady. <laughs> Thank you for all you do. So he walked away and Jensen goes, okay, Mima, I guess everybody knows who you are. I have met a lot of people in a lot of organizations and several of the organizations I've worked for. My husband was a long-term NRA member and I never was a member for a long time because he was a member. Why did I have to be a member? It wasn't until I decided I wanted to make a bigger difference with instructing and be more formalized with being certified that I became a member. I just can't understand why a, a gun owner wouldn't be an NRA member. The Women's Leadership Forum, I was invited to attend the very first one and they talked about what their dream was. And the dream that they wanted to bring together was to get the women of the NRA to no longer be silent partners, to step up and take a leadership role in securing the future for future generations and to secure the programs that affect and touch so many people. And I've been part of that ever since. And I've watched that evolve and grow and it is just fabulous. Some of you know that I love quilting. And when I look around this room, I see brilliant, bright, strong colors, texture, fine stitching. And if I put you all together into a beautiful quilt, it would last forever and it would be called sisterhood. It's very humbling to stand up here to talk to you about any topic, knowing the commitment, the power, the talents that sit in this room. And I always go home learning more than what I brought to the table. Freedom to bear arms is very, very important to keep our overall freedom. Without that, I'm, I don't know how long we'd last. I'll do everything I can, and I know Janet will, to. Uh, to keep it going to protect our rights. I did not understand that there was this huge arm of the NRA. It was all about education. There's a lot of people who don't even see the outdoors. They don't experience it. What's going to replace that? So trying to reach young people and get them to just simply love it and enjoy it. Do you know how lucky we are to have the NRA? I was recently at the Capitol and the TV station was there and they had no idea what my background was. So they came up, would you talk to us? And they said, how do you feel about the NRA being here? And I said, oh, thank God they're here. And the guy went like that. And I said, well, what do you think the NRA is? I said, buddy, I'm the NRA. That guy over there is the NRA. We're people, we're Americans. We're Americans that care about the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And when it's getting bad, they let us know, and then we can join forces, hold hands, and get in there and get it done. Janet cares deeply about spreading the message of safe, responsible firearm ownership to all. But she has a special place in her heart for sharing the shooting sports with women. After I got into hunting with Jim, he would start telling his friends, well, Janet will teach Susie how to shoot. She likes to teach. 
She's good at it. And she'd always drag eight to 16 women out there with her. I mean, took a whole band of them and introduced an awful lot of women to the, the outdoors. It's done by the NRA rules. Janet runs a tight ship. Janet was the one, she offered this class. And I was like, yes, you know, because I wanted to get back in the shooting so bad. I'd laid my gun aside and hadn't even picked it up in, in years. It's really a joy to teach. It really is. Women are very focused and, and they like to multitask. So they'll ask a lot of questions while you're trying to get them just to concentrate on one thing. But then all of a sudden they're zoned in and they learn quickly. Martha Smith, who came to my last uh, basic pistol class, she walked in the door and she said, I hope I can do this. I'm really afraid of pistols. I wasn't really that interested before, but now that I've been shooting, it's fun. When you learn something about any issue, it takes the fear, the mystery, takes it out, and it opens the door for you to learn more about it. Once they understand this is a tool, it's the person that uses it that's, that's important. We're a good half hour from any police protection here, you know, and a lot can happen in a half an hour. The right to bear arms uh, is paramount for anybody that wants to protect them, their family, and their property. Having the knowledge that they can take care of themselves in situations is important so that they can go on and enjoy life. There's so much positive, I think, the whole group of ladies have found and maybe have given us courage to be strong and to be who we are and not be afraid. The local guys who come here and shoot, they think this is great. They go, it's great you ladies are going out, learning how to shoot and doing it in a proper way. You don't have to do all of the things that come with firearms. You don't have to be anything that you don't want to be, but just shooting is so much fun. It's about helping other ladies feel good about themselves. Even though, you know, they've been members of my church, we've been together eight years, you kind of get to know a person a little differently on the range. I am just amazed that I am talking to this group of women who I didn't think would have any interest in firearms. Now we have a waiting list. That's a good thing. There just isn't anybody else that will do it right here. Not for the gals so no. much. No. Everywhere she goes, everything she does, she's just first class, like Janet. <laughs> she's so enthusiastic about life itself, and she's a magnet very humble lady who wants to help others. I hope I leave a legacy to my grandchildren. I want them to be advocates like I am, and it has to start with our next generations. But we all have to stand and fight, and I will hold my hand up. I will help. <laughs>